Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Housing Corporation Limited Q3 FI23 Earnings Conference Call hosted by Budweiser's. As a reminder, the all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the session concludes. Should you need assistance during this conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Rajat Gupta from Go India Advisors. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thank you, Nirav. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, welcome to Ganesh Housing Corporation Limited earnings call to discuss the Q3 and nine months FY23 results. We have on the call with us today Mr. Rajendra Shah, Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Neeraj Kalawatia, Vice President Finance, and Mr. Ravi, Corporate and Financial Advisors. Uh, we must remind you that the discussion on today's call may include certain forward-looking statements and must be therefore viewed in conjunction with the risk that the company faces. We now request Mr. Rajinder Shah to take us through the company's business outlook and financial highlights, subsequent to which we'll open the floor for Q&A. Uh, thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Rajat. And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you all for joining us on this call today to discuss our quarter three and nine months financial for FY22-23 operational and financial performance. I would like to I would like to begin by by sharing my thoughts on current real estate environment, especially in Ahmedabad. The current market trend is very favorable, and we believe that upcycle in the real estate market is going to continue. Demand and upgrade, uh, upgrade to large homes, price hikes uh, across the sector has been very well absorbed by the co consumers even in a rising interest rate envir environment. The salaried class and, <coughs> and the users, have, uh, users are driving the demand in mid-income mid segment. Luxury market also continues to do well in, and history tells us that luxury market, uh, luxury real estate market generally picks up in up up market cycle. The gift city has has seen increasing demand from foreign investment, and there is a high degree of interest from banking and financial sectors. We have occupied more than half of cities real estate uh, cities commercial uh, commercial real estate. Coming to our quarterly performance. We are happy to report another quarter of Robert's, robust performance. Our aspiration and focus for last few quarters were to deliverage our balance sheet and we are very happy to announce that, that the company has become a net debt free in quarter three financial, financial year 2022-23 from a peak debt of over INR 6,500 million around three and a half years back. On gross debt side, we have a minor debt of only rupees 143 million as we speak, which after cash balance and, and uh, fixed deposit is negative debt position for the company. The company continues to maintain extremely healthy debt, debt equity profile and other parameters when it comes to deleveraging the balance sheet. Coming to our financial performance for quarter three and nine months ended, uh, ended uh, December 2022, our revenue for quarter three 23 came in at rupees 674 million versus rupees 761 million in quarter three for financial year 22 slightly lower on account of high sales velocity from our project maple tree during that period. During nine months ended for financial year 22-23, our revenue grew at 91% and came in at uh, uh, rupees 4,378 million versus rupees 2,293 million in nine months ended fin financial year 21-22. Our EBITDA grew at 48% year on year and came in at rupees 475 million 
for quarter 3 financial year 2223 versus rupees 322 million in quarter 3 ended financial year 2122 during 9 months ended financial year 2022-23 ebita grew at 82% and stood at 1514 million rupees versus 831 million rupees in 9 months ended financial year 2021-22 Our PAD for Q3 financial year 2023 came in at rupees 303 million versus rupees 248 million, ending in quarter three financial year 2122, registering a growth of 22 percent year on year in nine months ended financial year 23. PAD increased at 38 percent. to INR 627 million versus INR 454 million in 9 months ended financial year 2122 our finance cost was reduced by more than 60% or stood at rupees 179 million in 9 months ended financial year 2223 compared to 9 months ended financial year 2122 additionally our collections for the quarter stood at rupees 307 million on the project update both the both our projects namely malabar county 3 and malabar exotica currently under development were 100% booked in malabar 3 project we have received rera approval and permission to commence constructed construction in february 2021 during 22 odd months actual construction post this uh, this approval we are happy to announce that we have completed 100% construction in this project across six, six towers it is also a reflection of underlying value in the company given that we have achieved construction milestone well ahead of scheduled timelines we have applied for building use permission which is occupation certificate and expecting the same to get from ahmedabad municipal corporation during this quarter itself in malabar exotica project we have received rera approval and permission to commence construction in july august 2021 during 17 odd months period we have managed to complete more than 40% of the project and we have uh, we have been progressing ahead of the scheduled completion our planning for this project is nearly uh, our planning for the new project is nearly completion and we will be able to launch these projects very shortly as of december 2022 we have no inventory in ongoing project also ending december 2022 we have unsold completed inventory of 0.1 million square feet which we value at around 40 million on the strategic initiative of partnering with tishman spires for development of acz first phase which would be a commercial development of around 1.2 million square feet of gross leasable area the master plan is under progress and we will soon be rolling out our plans for the uh, in in relation to the this project including layout plan and uh, uh, and floor plans we have uh, as we mentioned earlier this is tishman spires first project in ahmedabad which will enable us to co- collaborate for the acz development property and lease management in phased manner having worked with global giants like meta amazon linkedin jp morgan accenture nike and some of the very very notable indian blue chip companies tishman would bring along with with them practice of international standard for benchmarking monitoring project progress and quality assurance 
they will also liaison with various agencies in project development uh, design and leverage its uh, wide international network for development and marketing of scz project to conclude my remarks real estate sector prospect remains very strong with a cohesive improvement in demand supply and prices continuing investment in ahmedabad and surrounding areas in manufacturing it and other sectors coupled with emergence of gift city as a global financial services center has contributed to attracting international talent resulting in rise of property demand we are confident about our trend to about this trend to continue in ahmedabad and with our superior execution track record and strong project pipelines we are confident of achieving significant profitability in coming years with this i request the floor to be open to questions and answers rajat can you take over please yeah please thank you very point. much thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and two participants are requested to use handset while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles participants you may press star and one to ask a question the first question is from the line of puneet from hsbc please go ahead yeah thank you so much and and congratulations on good numbers my first question is uh, with respect to your uh, you know project ongoing and planned so you you said there is only 0.1 million square feet which is unsold so what are you going to do for next uh, you know uh, uh, couple of quarters thank you uh see we uh, though we have uh, we don't have much of inventory which is left in completed or ongoing project however we uh, we are planning to launch a few uh, few projects i'll just uh, give you a brief about those about yeah. about 4 and 1/2 lakh square feet of residential project called uh, retreat is okay. underway and apart from that we will be soon launching scz project which uh, which is in partnership with tishman and spires which will have about 1.2 million square feet of gross leasable area minimum this may area uh, this area may increase but 1.2 is minimum what we will be constructing over there so these two projects are there in immediate pipeline apart from that we we uh, there are other projects we, which will come in but uh, these two things are uh, for immediate development so so what is the stage of approval for retreat now retreat we are we are approaching last leg of approvals meaning raja chitti or uh, permission to con- start construction is something which uh, we are expecting once that comes in we need to apply for era and start start with construction so, so what kind of timeline are you looking to launch this uh, about um, I, conservatively i will say two maximum two to and a half months but uh, it can start uh, in a month month time also is era giving approval so fast yeah yeah rera generally takes uh, about a week after uh, you uh, you apply to them okay so that's, yeah. that's good to hear and on yeah. the scz project uh, can you help us understand the business model uh, what's what's happening there i mean would you sell would you lease and and what kind of investment will you need to put in and what kind of money will tishman put in ultimately Uh, i'll take the question the uh, scz comprises of both processing and non processing uh, zones both at this point in time in the processing zone we are looking at uh, more on the lease model along with tishwan uh, spares they'll be they'll be constructing and they'll be uh, leasing out the entire property 
uh, and for the uh, non-processing, it will be the residential that will be on a sale model basis. Uh, this is uh, the first one is only for about two towers at this point in time, like what uh, Mr. Rajender just spoke. But going forward, it did not necessarily be the the same model even for a processing zone. It can be a mix of both leasing as well as uh, sale out. So, so two towers worth 1.2 million square feet, right? Is that understanding correct? Yeah. Yes. So, so fairly large towers here. And yeah. uh, what what is the economic share? I mean. Who is going to bear the construction cost and what is the percentage sharing between you and Tishman? No, there is no sharing as such, as such between Tishman and Arsenal. The entire thing belongs to uh, GHCL only, Ganesh Housing. The construction cost is good, therefore to be borne by Ganesh Housing only. They are helping in two things majorly and that is the construction uh, itself. That is, you know, there will be the DM there as well as uh, that is the development management and uh, on the leasing it out also, they'll be getting a large because they have experience in leasing out these kind of properties all over India and of course in the world. And therefore, they'll be helping in getting the lease of all these premises. So that's their contribution for which they get uh, paid. But the entire revenues and uh, profitability is of Ganesh housing only. Okay, so this in a way will become your annuity portfolio. Uh, absolutely correct. Two million square feet. And absolutely. what are the rentals you're looking at? Well, uh, it is, it's been flexible at this point. It is very difficult to say, but it can uh, be uh, much higher, at least 10, 15 percent higher than the normal rentals which are prevalent in this market because of the kind of a building that we are planning, as well as because Tishman Spear is in, uh, involved in this. So, so what number can one generate? Uh, um, I think uh, it would be around uh, 60 rupees per square feet or so, around that. It could be a little higher too, but we are being a little conservative at this point in time. We'll, once we see the traction, you know, in the first few, then we'll yeah. be able to tell you the exact numbers even with uh, more confidence. But 60 seems to be definitely fair, which is, as I said, much higher than the normal rentals. Yeah. And apologies, I'm not very well familiar with where this land parcel is. If you can, you know, guide there on. At, uh, yeah, if you, this is a new, uh, this is the place where actually the entire yeah. development is happening uh, in Ahmedabad at this point in time. It is called the Vaishnav Devi Circle. It is on the... Uh, SG Highway, Sarkej Gandhi Nagar Highway. Uh, okay. the, move, the city has been moving towards that now. So a lot of development is happening in around there. So that's that's the new CBD because Adani's uh, Shanti Gram is close by. Uh, yeah. uh, we hear Reliance is coming with a corporate office that side, right. and a lot of uh, Zydus hospitals. I mean Zydus offices just on the uh, on the circle itself. So that's the place where the CBD is moving, and that, that's where this SCZ is. And uh, therefore, we believe that you know uh, it would be uh, blo uh, booming uh, very soon that area itself. And, and will it be competing with Gift City in any way? Oh no, no, it cannot be compete. Uh, actually, it is complementing Gift City. It is not competing with them. Gift City is quite far from there. You want to add anything? I just wanted to add here. See, if you see the, the primary motive for the gift city is basically to promote the international finance uh, trade. And right. predominantly, uh, the beneficiary for that will be the BFSI and your exchanges as, as well as foreign controlled uh, AIF funds. And yeah. if you see the numbers which are increasing there year on year and uh, continuously are from these three segments only. And that's why, Malaki, once this set up, uh, primarily our target market will not get impacted because of the booming uh, piece and the gift city. Understood. That's very helpful. Thank you so much and all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the man of Avinash Gosharkar from Profit Mart of Securities. Please go ahead. I will ask you request it and you to run and go ahead with the question, please. Yeah, I think uh, I wanted to understand, uh, you know, the ongoing projects, sir, which are going in Ahmedabad. Uh, if you could give some color on the kind of average prices, you know, which you are getting. I mean, just to get a flavor of how the real estate market in Ahmedabad is faring. You mentioned in your opening remark that despite rising interest rates, you know, demand is not uh, affected. So if you could give some idea about what are the kind of average rates, uh, you know, are prevailing currently and uh, what is the kind of outlook for the next two to three quarters. Thank you for your question. 
see if you see in our projects where we are operating our current prices are ranging from somewhere around 3800 to 4500 that is how we are pricing our projects uh, on a overall if you see from a ahmedabad prospective during year 2022 the average pricing in ahmedabad was somewhere between 3000 to 3200 which is basically because of the there are low pricing pockets are also there in ahmedabad plus there are the medium segments are also there which are operating to so average out these are uh, like lying between 3000 3200 so even if you compare with a city like bombay 3800 to 4500 is pretty cheap in terms of the pricing of any real estate sector so that way matlab we are seeing the absorption also is coming very nicely even with the price hike during last calendar year so basically just to sum up what uh, neeraj has said if despite of price rise the price point is very, very attractive to customers at large however there are pockets where prices are very high very high by amdabad standard would mean Uh, somewhere in Bhopal Amli, you you can achieve rate of about ten thousand rupees a square feet on chargeable area. Whereas uh, in uh, if you are at far off places like uh, Adani Shanti Gram or somewhere around that, you would get somewhere about four thousand five hundred to five thousand rupees a square feet as uh, as a sale realization. So I I think this would give you broad range of. Uh, Price range in which market is operating in Ahmedabad. So anyway, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jay from Dollar Capital. Uh, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I have. Jay, sorry to interrupt you. Your voice is echoing. May I request to speak through the handset? Yes. Hello. Yeah, is my voice audible now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I have a couple of questions. So, uh, first is uh, both our residential projects are booked, and we don't have much inventory as well. Uh, have uh, have seen players like Godrej emerging really strong, uh, done extremely good in terms of uh, sales booking for their new project in Ahmedabad, and are very confident of upcoming projects in Ahmedabad as well. So why are we not launching new projects and planning it for later down the year? Uh, so first question is that. Sure. So um, we we are in process of launching a retreat project, and once we have launched our uh, assessment project in pro- processing zone, in non-processing zone we are underway. We meaning we, on our drawing drawing board there is a, there is a Uh, plan to launch a, a phase of non-processing zone, which will be mostly residential. So, in fact, uh, there is uh, there is undercurrent, and we are planning to uh, show, uh, in short time you will see one uh, residential project in terms of retreat, and other residential project in terms of uh, uh, no, uh, development of non-processing zone in SZ, which will be mostly residential. is also underway okay okay and uh, secondly just wanted to understand what would be the outright land sales cumulatively uh, we might have done in last 3 4 quarters both in terms of area and value uh, also what are the locations where we sold this land and what's the rationale behind selecting these location as uh, land parcels so jai just to answer you uh, meaning uh, like uh, we have collected certain land parcels and when you are aggregating certain land parcels you generally see to it that those land parcels have to be contiguous so that it will give you good uh, uh, good plan for development however uh, in the process when you are left with certain land parcels which are not contiguous and which are not part of your core development uh, you would like to um, monetize those those land parcels so ba- basically this these are uh, those land parcels which, which are selected for monetization 
which have been sold in past two to three quarters. However, uh, uh, meaning quantum of uh, how much area which which place these are sold. These these are sold near uh, uh, Godavari is the is the area where uh, the, these non critical land parcels we we were owning, which have been recently sold. Uh, okay. Let me just add to that. Uh, see the the model. Uh, sorry, uh, you are asking something more, or should I go ahead and answer it? No, please, please go ahead. Yeah, yeah uh, the the model business model of uh, Ganesh Housing is uh, to develop as well as have land parcels which can be sold. So uh, the buying happens at the time where the gr future growth potential is seen, and therefore the buying happens at a very low price and. As and when the development happens around that area, and if that land is not for self-development, that parcel is sold. So as a part of the business model itself, certain land areas are sold as land itself, and certain land areas are developed and sold to uh, put projects onto that. So uh, the lands which have been happening are in those areas which were bought when development was envisaged, and the moment the uh, price around that went, because it was not for self-use, it has been sold. So it is a part of the business model that we keep following. Okay, okay, got it. Uh, and just uh, wanted, wanted a clarity on the area and the uh, value of the land parcel in the last three or four quarters. The value will be around around 300 to 350 somewhere. Uh, the area exactly, Malaki, we don't have a detail right now with us. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Saurabh Gilda from Motilal Oswal. Please. Thank you. Aap jis vyakti se baat kar rahe hai? We move on to the next participant. The next question is from the line of Amanjit Sethi from Oculus Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, sir, am I audible? Yes. Yes, Amanjit. Uh, okay, so so firstly, congratulations on the good set of numbers and becoming net debt free. Uh, sir, I'm a little new to the company, so please uh, pardon me. Uh, so just on this Tishman project, right? Uh, just yeah. wanted to understand how did this partnership come into being? Like, so have they done other projects in India? Uh, did they approach you? Uh, what were the synergies that you identified? And a little bit on the commercials that you mentioned. So for the sales and marketing and the DM, what will be the basis of uh, payment, sir? Like in the sense, would it be a percentage? of rentals or how would it be? Uh, so th thank you Amanjit. Uh, so basically, uh, see, Tishman Spires is known as a uh, reputed, one of the very, very well known global brand to to construct AAA graded uh, commercial buildings. They have done empty number of projects in US and other other geographies. And their clients, as as we mentioned, are who's who of world. So basically, it was uh, if if you see uh, as compared to Tishman Spires, Ganesh Housing has been a conservative developer who is based out of uh, Ahmedabad, and we have completed very large uh, development of real estate in in Ahmedabad. However, uh, as far as uh, dealing with uh, global, globally reputed, uh, uh, meaning uh, uh, occupants, we 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 wanted some some sort of support uh, from uh, any global player who will who would be uh, who would be doing networking with them. So that we we found in uh, Tishman Spires. And Tishman Fires, when they they wanted to came to Gujarat, they wanted a strong local local developer because they have very good execution capability. However, a, a person who is owning some critical mass of land at very very uh, significantly located project uh, project and land. Is something which they were looking in us. So basically, who approached who is not so very significant, but these are synergies which which get us together. And I think we are looking at very very long term relationship with uh, with them. So is it exclusive? They, they have they have, they are already present in 
Pune and Hyderabad uh, uh, and do, uh, doing work and uh, they have to their credit some of the notable Indian blue chips which are their client uh, hmm. apart from global giants which they already cater to. So b basically right. all in all it will be a win-win for, for both Ganesh Housing and Krishna Inspires. Right. So and, is it an exclusive uh, coming, partnership coming that you'll have to your... for Ahmedabad? Pardon me? Uh, sorry, sir. Just uh, I'll let you complete the previous answer, sir. So, and coming back to you, uh, you said, uh, meaning uh, what kind of uh, development management fees or lease management fees they, they would charge us. Uh, it is negotiated based on certain... Uh, certain uh, uh, mass of development, uh, the DM fees, and leasing, lease management fees actually is a function of what kind of lease rental we are going to receive. So I think uh, I, I have answered your question, if you have any further mm -hmm. question. Uh, or uh, one second, Neeraj wants to add something. Uh, just to add here, if you see, we are occupying around 64 acres of land in SEZ area. And since this will be going to the first phase, it is always in the interest of the company from a longer prospect also that we kick off the first phase itself with a very reputed player. So that the unlocking of the land from the rest of the area will be easier for us in terms of commanding the better rental also in terms of developing the balance area. Got it. Appreciate so. So, so is this like an exclusive relationship in the sense can they enter with any other player in the region in Ahmedabad or is it like an exclusive tie-up that you have? No, right now they have, we don't have any exclusivity, but this it is, it is understood and it is uh, uh, ethical practice to have generally li limit your relations with uh, one or two large developers. Uh, which is uh, meaning that that kind of uh, unwritten but understanding is with, there between both the parties that yes once we have tied up with uh, Tishman Spires we would not uh, generally enter into development management arrangement with somebody else and once hmm. they have entered into uh, DM relationship with Ganesh Housing uh, within uh, within good uh, radius of area, they would also not enter into uh, this kind of arrangement with other local developer. Got it, sir. And just any rough idea on the timelines of this uh, 1.2 million launch? Uh, next th three to four months, because we 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 would like to. We would like to invest a longer time in planning and may make it so much meticulous that execution becomes very smooth. That, that is our experience, if you see, with Malabar County 3 and Malabar Exotica project, which we could uh, complete ahead of time only because of our meticulous and uh, thoughtful planning. Right. So what would be the construction period do you envisage once you launched it? Uh, we would uh, we would expect somewhere about uh, 30 months to complete uh, uh, at least 50 percent of uh, uh, gross leasable areas. That is about six uh, uh, 600 thousand square feet. And uh, for launching of another 600 thousand square feet, we will uh, we can't. Uh, Tell you date right now, but we we will see as the as the things go ahead. Got it. So so we can see revenue coming in from this project. You can say probably the end of FY twenty four or early FY twenty five. Yeah, I think uh, earliest could be uh, twenty four. Uh, 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 earliest could be 24. However, even if that pre-leasing or uh, LOI can get signed earlier. Hmm. Yeah. Got it. Got. It. So you mentioned your current realizations in the city are about um, 3,800 to 4,500. Um, so what was this similar number uh, say last year? Just to get a sense of the appreciation that has happened. So uh, about we, when we launched, it was about 3,300. 3,300. So 3,300. It has ramped up up to almost uh, past 5,000 5, rupees now. So because uh, it was 4,500 when we sold it last, however, prices have continuously increased post that. So 
right now if we were to sell similar properties it would fetch more than 5000 rupees okay understood understood okay. sir uh, is there any opportunity that we have in the gift city as well sorry i'm not aware of the entire land parcels that you possess but do we have any development opportunity there no gift city we do not have we do not uh, own any land parcel however just to mention this scg project what we have uh actually locationally it is very very uh, if somebody is aware of amdavad he would understand this is bang on uh, vaishnav devi circle so accessibility from sp ring road and uh, uh, sg highway is excellent hmm. got it got it so and um, in your vision so you mentioned uh, you're looking at 8 million square feet uh, across various projects in 4 years so if you could just help uh, get a sense of what will be your annual uh, launch run rate like in terms of million square feet and a rough uh, you know mix of this of how much would be commercial how much would be uh, scz this a broad uh, you know vision break up so basically uh, our mix is something which will be uh, driven by market dynamics uh once we are we are able to launch part of our accessory thereafter it is up to us as to what kind of non processing zone area we want to launch or what kind of uh, processing zone area we want to launch we would uh, time and uh, plan our uh, mix in such a way that it is optimal for for that market's consumption however if if somebody wants to give you some some sort of idea our uh, uh, next next plan plan projects will be roughly about uh, 40% commercial roughly about 60% residential got it so and on the residential bit or, or overall so what is your approximately you think the launch date so because as you said we don't have any inventory or uh, anything unsold or completed so yeah. will we be trying to become more aggressive in terms of our launch date just to give a visibility uh no no we uh, for visibility we don't need to launch even a, a single new project because uh, by by other means and other revenue streams we have been managing our uh, revenue and bottom line very well however it is our passion of uh, doing construction and being ahead with uh, uh, delivery of uh, uh, fresh flats and our new products that we will be launching new projects so as as we as i have told earlier in next one or two months we would be launching with uh, our uh, uh, retreat which is residential project and about two to three months we would be launching our uh, commercial development of scg uh, mr ravi would like to add just just a moment so it's a it's a matter of time when the ball starts rolling when we say that certain projects are announced let's say this is at both commercial and residential once that the, when the approval come they'll come for uh, a bulk approvals right and we will be launching one after the other so from the next two to three months let's say uh, the kind of a project launch and also capitalizing on that and monetizing on various aspects will be a continuous exercise as we see for the next 5 to 7 years because there are more, no more than 2 3 projects which are in the pipeline it has uh, as he just mentioned the planning uh, took takes more time and once a plan is done the execution happens so from the time these things will start executing it will be a roll on for a continuous period of time one after the other Understood. So, thank you so much for answering all my questions. All the best, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashish Kumar from Infinity Alternatives. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir. I just wanted to understand a couple of things. One is that while you have done a good job in terms of becoming debt free, what will be the peak capital requirement for your ATSCZ? Because obviously you are. Uh, Building it for that thing. And what will be the peak capital requirement for the project? So we expect that uh, each phase of uh, meaning 600,000 square feet, which we are going to launch immediately, would cost somewhere about 300 crores. 
there we may need uh, meaning if even if we have debt debt equity ratio of say uh, 60 40 we may need somewhere around uh, 100 crores as uh, new capital um, meaning capital to be invested and we have enough resources to meet uh, even that Sure, sir. And just to understand, yeah. uh, on the residential project also, do you expect a peak capital requirement? Because I'm just trying to understand the cash flows. Uh, no, no. Because from your current ca current two projects, I think because you have received 100% of bookings, I think your yeah. future cash flow may be only 50, 60 crores. Yeah. For RECI, we hardly require any, uh, meaning any financial support right. or uh, any, any debt. Because uh, as as we speak, meaning we have uh, kind of investors who are ki kind of waiting as to when we will be launching our new project, and they they are ready to pre-book or book. Pre-booking is something which uh, we generally discourage, and uh, internal accruals will take care of I think entire uh, entire project cost. Okay. Uh, also, just to add here, if you see, I mean, both the projects are 100% booking, but the collection happens over a gradual manner, depending on how the so construction how progresses. The collections and cash flow, if you can, uh, cost required, because most real estate companies actually give that declaration. That how much is the fresh cash flow that you expect on the remaining period? Obviously, because the revenue recognition for everybody is different. So I would appreciate if you can give us some estimate from next investor presentation that how much is the collections required and how much is expected and how much is the cost expected to complete the project. See, in terms of the revenue recognition, if you see for a listed company which are now has to go through the India's requirement, revenue recognition happens post view only. I understand. I understand that, sir. I think the question is that from a cash flow pro follows a very different policy as compared to accounting, right? And every project has a different requirements in terms of cash flow. When you ask for the money and when the booking amount comes, some some tend to send sell more on different schemes on the project, right? What will be helpful is if you can give us from from a, from a cash thank, flow perspective. Thank you for your suggestion. Yes, we yeah, we will yeah. implement this from next presentation. So if you can it's do a, that, it's it will be helpful, sir. That's it is thing. very very good suggestion. We we will definitely so that, so that we know how much is the cash flow. Sure. Uh, the sure, second sure. thing was sir, there was is there was there any reason because Ahmedabad from whatever little I know of Ahmedabad real estate market the real estate market in last two years for Ahmedabad was booming, but we didn't have any launch. So was there any reason why we decided to go slow on the launches? Um, two, three well, reasons. We have a very good land bank already, sir. Yeah, sure, sure. Two, three reason, reasons which I would uh, explain, uh, try and explain. One is uh, next uh, next in launch is SCZ project. And SCZ is, is a project where uh, some of the government policies were not clear at state level and central level. So we recent it has been recent development that what kind of FSI, what kind of uh, flexibility which will be avail available in terms of occup occupants and all those things have been recently provided. Apart from that, you would be aware that recently there was a election in state of Gujarat which has affected approval process for almost about two and a half to three months delay is caused only because of that. Because uh, since uh, November right up to uh, recent development, which is end of December, because of uh, taking over by new new government, there were uh, approvals which were not issued to any any new newer projects. So, so basically, all in all, these two things. And once uh, uh, SZ is a sizably big project which will give us visibility of next seven to eight years to come because we will be uh, launching projects in phased manner in SEZ. Uh, planning for that and uh, joining hands with Eastman Spires who has given us uh, changes in design feedback which, which are very good and which we wanted to implement with full uh, kind of uh, full hearted uh, uh, full hearted way 
So all in all, these three prime reasons are such that which has caused kind of uh, d delay in launch of new projects. However, we will, I am sure we will recoup this delay in launch of projects by faster execution because right now whatever planning we are doing is so meticulous which will save us very, very long time in terms of execution. Okay, thanks a lot and wish you all the best. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Gaurav from Corbin Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh -huh. Sir, uh, I wanted to understand it. Gaurav, sorry. Gaurav, I think uh, uh, yeah, your voice is not very clear to me. Uh, can you hear me now? Hello? Can I request you to speak through the handset? Yeah, can you hear me now? Hello? Much better. Thank you. Hello? Hello I am audible now? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, sir, I just wanted to understand uh, when you decide on a project, uh, do you have any return metrics in mind, like a target ROE, which you uh, think should uh, you generate over the life of that project, uh, or any other return metric which you look at? No, return metrics is generally meaning uh, is kind of deceptive at at times because. If you if you are looking at leasehold property for development, your returns will be different. Again, see project payback period is completely ignored if you are looking only at uh, meaning kind of uh, return on investment. So basically, you have, there are many other parameters which are to be looked at. Uh, other than only return on investment, kind of peak investment required, peak debt which is required, kind of turnaround time which, which uh, this project will take, uh, or uh, uh, meaning uh, title to the land, uh, uh, what uh, what would be uh, what would be time which will be required to secure approvals and RERA approval are. Factors which are other than these which have to be considered. So all in all, that one cannot give any free, any fixed kind of. Uh, I I would take only projects which are giving me more than 30% IRR. Then I would be deprived of uh, kind of uh, rental projects we, which might be which might be giving me good uh, good returns. However, in terms of IRR, they might they might not, might not be well. So basically, we will have to look at all these parameters in order to select whether we we will go ahead with acquisition of this project or not. So, so we don't target any minimum return on equity in say 15 percent for any project as such. Sure, well, well, the the, uh, the past has seen has shown us that. Uh, uh, the uh, equity returns have been around 25 to 35 ranges between that as because of the reasons he said. Uh, yes, there is a ballpark number which is there on uh, in the mind, which is which should be like maintaining the targeted uh, equity returns, and therefore it, uh, it tra translates to around 25 to 35 percent of return equity has always been men, uh, maintained all this while. And I in the future also all these projects which you're looking at will continue to yield that kind of a thing. Whatever may be the uh, parameters decided, we are sure that it will be within this range for sure. So you can, in a way, say the targeted equity is around 25 to 35%. Got it. Sir, uh, on this debt reduction of 50 crores, uh, can you give a rough sense on how much has been done through cash flows and how much has happened through land sales? Uh, all land sales are cash flows, right? So the question is, it, it's a combination. It's been over a period of two, three years. So the entire debt has been retained, uh, repaid out of the cash accruals, out of the profits of the company. And the profits do consist of both uh, the inventory, which was there uh, for the last uh, couple of years before the COVID times, and the good parcels of land, which is a part of the business model. So it's a combination of both. Well, the question was, uh, how much can happen to... Uh your land sales and not to the project sales, basically, uh, uh, the residential projects which you are not. No, it, it, it all comes together. So actually, the uh, land sales have been a contributory 
in the last two, three quarters, a little more than the inventory sales, let us say. And that's the reason where maybe in the last two, three quarters, it could have been coming out of the uh, land sales more. But over a period of time, the last two years, it's a combination of uh, profits from the entire three verticals, whether it is uh, the new development launch projects, with the, which gives a surplus cash flow, or the inventories which were there, which has given the surplus cash flows, or the land sales, which uh, had given us the cash flows. Okay. Uh, sir, what is our cost of debt? Cost of debt, I'm sorry? Twelve percent. Twelve percent. Okay. Thank you, sir. That's it. Thank you. The next question Thank is you. from the line of Rushab Shah from Anubhuti Advice. Go ahead. Yeah, hi. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I just had a uh, wanted a clarification that you mentioned that for the first phase of SEZ, uh, we are having uh, we will be having a cost of around three hundred crore for six lakh uh, square feet. So that comes to around 5,000 rupees per square foot, uh, the development cost. So isn't it on a very higher end compared to what we are doing for the residential projects uh, earlier? So, yeah, uh, th thank you, Rushab. Uh, first of all, this is going to what we are, con uh, meaning what we are uh, uh, trying to construct here is a grade A building which has not been seen in Ahmedabad. And this, this will have a flat slab construction with more than three meter clear, uh, clear floor to floor height uh, with spread out uh, beams, uh, which will give a floor plate of roughly about uh, uh, 30 or 1000 square feet. We, uh, this kind of construction Ahmedabad has not seen. We we would have commercial commercial buildings which are called uh, uh, meaning superior uh, commercial commercial buildings, but uh, kind of construction what we are envisaging would take that kind of uh, construction cost, and we are going to have this as a uh, at least as a gold or uh, platinum rated uh, uh, rated building so that we can we could attract global uh, globally known players to ahmedabad right? yeah and this is not a and when it is not right to compare uh, co cost of construction of conventional residential building to a grade a commercial building because costs are costs would be very very different. Kind of steel requirement will be very different than what what are generally used in residential. So okay. I think five uh, five thousand rupees a square feet is a good reasonable num number of cost per square feet. If uh, kind of specification which you want to achieve are kind of what we we are envisaging. Okay, okay, got it. So, is it is it possible that because it's just the first phase, the cost would be higher, and th when you launch the second phase, this can eventually go down also? Is it a possibility there? Uh, no, I think consistently it will be at least about five hundred okay. square feet. Yeah. Okay, okay, got it. And my second question was uh, with respect to the township. So, is there any update regarding the Godavari township that we are planning since long? Uh, any timeline or approval which is uh, there in place? Uh, I mean, if you can guide on it, that. Uh, we, it, it, it is in the planning stage. However, since we, we are kind of bit conservative, I would not like to <coughs> or say uh, any timelines to this. But uh, mm -hmm. as we go along. Uh, whatever is there immediate in pipeline is something what we have discussed. But for township, uh, right now we do do not have any plan to meaning we we do not have any date to date for a specific date for launch. Okay, okay, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Due to time constraint, we'll take the last question from the line of some, some RA advisory. Please go ahead. Sorry, may I request to unmute Mr. Farron? Hello. Yes. Hello. 
Go ahead. Can you hear me? Uh, not very clearly. Can you can you please be a bit? Yes, sir. Nice coming from your mind. No, I I don't have any questions right right now. Or my questions are answered. Thank you. We think that was the last question. And now I hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for showing interest and joining us, uh, joining with us on this uh, quarter three and nine months, uh, nine months for financial year 20 to 23 operational and financial performance call. See you again. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. On behalf of Go India Advisors, that concludes this conference. Thank you. Sir. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Thank you.